Hey guys, welcome back to one more episode of Auto Terraforma Craft. In the last episode, I took a big mining trip down south in order to get more emesis. It worked out super well, I got over 400 more emesis all this way. But now I'm going to continue with the exploration and head towards west because in about 2000 blocks there is a claystone area that I know of. So I want to use the big mining machine and turn it directly into glowstone dust for everlasting torches. So along the way there's actually a lot of um, jungle and yeah, planes in between. So I kind of want to keep an eye out for ocelots. In case I come across one, I'm definitely going to use the bolt and try to, to trap the ocelot so we can tame it before it can actually despawn. Hopefully that actually works out. Um, I'm also going to take a look at every animal I come across because I still haven't seen all of the animals that are in the game. There's also panthers and cougars. Never seen any of those. We maybe can find some of those, then yeah, we'll also try to capture them. So we could maybe try to bring one of those home, but this might be a bit of a problem. I guess apart from that, we can quickly actually take a look through the whole list. So I've seen a polar bear, grizzly bear, black bear. Those two cats I haven't seen yet. Saber tooth I've seen and the lion. They are also in the, the claystone area. Then I haven't seen the new dire wolf yet, only the normal wolf. And here the ocelot. So you can only tame the wolf and the ocelot, get pets, and then there's also a couple other animals just for hunting. The turkey was added recently. Okay. Penguins I haven't seen yet as well, but I've seen a sea turtle once. No luck with the ocelot search yet, but I did reach the claystone biome. Since Kay Leonard can generate here as well, definitely gonna try to kill two birds with one stone and just, um, yeah. Place the mining machine where I find maybe traces again, maybe a small amount, but at least this time we should definitely get it with the big mining machine. Wait, what? Wasn't this very large sample of Kaolinite? A small sample? Medium? Large? Very large? Yes! <laughs> I never got a very large sample before. Okay, this is really good. Okay, here we go again, two in one this time. Let's turn this on. So I hope we got the center point right. Gotta drill through some trees first, but here, yeah, very large. Gotta get out of here now. Okay. Hopefully this time we will get a good amount. So the drill is already like 20 blocks deep and this time found nothing is actually a really good sign. So I guess we really got the center of that Kaolinid vein. There's some magnetite over there, but nothing says Kaolinid anymore. Okay, that's actually really good. Definitely want to dig up a good amount of the claystone. I'm gonna wait for this to reach Y0 roughly. Oh, that's kind of inconvenient. Kind of need to drop some items before I get to the Kaolinid. Might be best if we actually process all of the stone first. I'm gonna turn on the big steam engine. Okay, the water is placed. Gotta set the rotation speed controller. Something to like 28. Okay, now it's running on its own and now we can increase the speed so we get more water into the boiler. Okay, now it's running on its own. Do I have my engineer goggles? Not right now. I just can't really tell if we actually produce the 65,000 stress units that it's supposed to make, but I'm pretty sure it does. Okay, then we can click this level. It's actually a really inc inconvenient place. Okay, this whole line turns on. Could probably also charge my back tank somehow. Need to place there. No, it was actually below. Maybe below those crushing wheels. This might just work. Yeah, that looks good. We get the particles. Should go fairly quickly. Yeah, there you go. Got a thing. Okay. Back tank filled. And it's night time again. Good thing we can also get rid of the rain. Again, two birds and one stone. Now we just need to flick the lever here. I already set up the filters for cobble and loose claystone. We should start producing. 
Hopefully, if n I haven't tried this yet. Especially as crushing wheels hopefully work out fine. But that's disappointing. <laughs> What's wrong now? Oh, the speed wasn't adjusted. It's too fast again. So we need to set this to something like 16. That's also really inconvenient here. Can't just place some blocks. We had the same issue last time. Uh, we would need like 10 mechanical presses to actually keep up the speed. Okay. That should be better now. Looks like it works. There's definitely sand. And there's glowstone dust inside. Yes! <laughs> it works! So it took a bit over 5 minutes, but all of the loose claystone has been processed. And we got 13 stacks, almost 14 of glowstone dust. So that's pretty good, but definitely want to get a bit more. Let's see how much kaolinite we got. It's got to be at least 80, because we got a very large sample. Okay, can set up the filter now. Change direction, and here we go. Oh, this is a very good amount. But it doesn't stop. I need to make a chest. This is probably like two, three hundred. <laughs> That's crazy good. Wow, we're pretty much good on kaolinite. 404 kaolinite. That's actually more kaolinite than we have graphite now. So <laughs> in case we want to make more blast furnaces or whatever, then we need to find more graphite first. Wow, super good. Unfortunately, I didn't even bring any glue. So I can't just tape the, the chest to the whole contraption. What I can maybe do is I try to put it into the item vault. Just gotta climb up there somehow with the items and insert it with a funnel. Oh, that's a bit inconvenient though. Oh, there's another sample of kaolinite. This one should also be rather easy because only a very low amount of blocks here is very large. So this definitely is the center here. Alright, so machine is already back up. I'm processing the clay stone first. Below the clay stone is actually a second layer of stone, which is schist this time. That's kind of interesting because it's the only stone type that we can actually turn into green sand, which gives us guano. So I'm thinking I'm gonna send the machine back down and also dig up some of the, the schist stone. This time we didn't even hit a single water cave, so we also got a clean look down there. Should definitely not fall down there. Oh, an ocelot! Oh my god. <laughs> Quick, for this I got a boat in the inventory. Uh, where did it go? This time we're gonna get him. Running. Okay, got you. No, it didn't. <laughs> this time I won't let this guy get away. Finally, I ran so many thousand blocks to find one. And the worst thing is we need to find two, actually. Of different genders, so we might need more than two. So good old El El Mango Luck, gonna get five females. Okay, come on. It's so hard. At some point he's gonna run into some obstacle and get stuck. I mean, it's Minecraft AI, come on. Um, not quite. I wonder if I could actually leash him. I got one. Oh yeah, easy. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Wait, you can't push him? He's leashed? Okay, this will prevent him from despawning. That's like the the most important thing. Doesn't even say if it's male or female right now, only familiarity. As far as I know, they do eat grain. The rice is already rotten, I just got this rice just for taming an ocelot. Okay then um Don't have anything else on me, just gonna make a waypoint. Ocelot. I'm gonna find some grain. Okay, let's see. Is the taming like in vanilla where the cat is scared of you? At least it's what it used to be like. Let's see. I can just 
I can just click him. Alright, I would assume I just need to feed the ocelot ten times and it turns into a cat, similar to what the wolves did. Ten times. What am I supposed to do now? I feel like the best thing to do right now is just to keep exploring, try to find a second ocelot, trap him and then at some point come back and tame them all in one go. Because if, even if I camp right next to the ocelot now with sleeping, it would still take two hours to uh, convert the ocelot into a cat that also needs to be tamed. Um, quite some effort and then even if I get the cat, I need to bring it home somehow. So probably best not too far away from the ocean if I just at some point take a boat and try to get the ocelot. Okay, then there's a lot of unexplored terrain still in here. Maybe there's a second one somewhere. Oh, I actually found a baby ocelot! That's perfect! Oh, gotta eat. Can I lure them now? They're just basically ocelots from vanilla. Okay, I gotta chase after this one. There were actually three of them, but I'm pretty sure the others despawned by now. They all took off in a different direction. They're so quick, they're even quicker <laughs> than the adult ones. <laughs> oh no. Can't get to the guy. <sighs> Got him, finally! Whew, that's actually so hard! Okay, got a boat. I'm gonna head back, see if maybe the other ocelots are still around. But I'm pretty sure they did they, despawn. They there were like three ocelots. One adult and two babies. Unfortunately, the other ocelots despawned. This mechanic is yeah, really so dumb. I don't like it. Oh, we got a situation where the... Baby Ocelot hitbox is smaller than the boat hitbox, so I can't really get to this guy. Um, that makes it a bit harder now. Sometimes the horse, of course, has to stand on top. Sometimes you can actually reach them through the bottom. Let's quickly check. That's a possibility here, the hitboxes. No! Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. It used to be a thing with the... The LA's in vanilla. Couldn't really reach them in a minecart before they fixed it, so I had to do it from below, but yeah, no chance. Alright, at some point, this guy will also grow up and it's easier to feed. Alright, then there's still more terrain left to explore, but it's getting less and less. Here we find some more. And finally back home, this was actually such a long trip, it's already July again. Should maybe also quickly check on the banana trees to see if they maybe came back. Okay, time to unload the big vault. The one over there is already emptied. It's a bit of a shame that I can't really use the gravel for something. Um, if I would just somehow get the gravel onto the belt there, it would actually um, be crushed to sand, then glowstone dust, and then the glowstone dust is getting destroyed. So we would need to get the gravel somewhere yeah, on the belt around the second uh, crushing wheel, then we could process it. It was kind of too lazy. Got a lot of stuff anyway, so not entirely sure how much we got, but looks pretty good. And there's also still more kale in it in there, more guano. I brought a couple chests, so we can unload this. Okay, let's place them like this and some shoots. And should fill up rather quickly. Neat. Oh, there we can see. Yeah, definitely got a plenty of guano as well. And I got toolboxes, can actually bring it inside the house. Okay, let's have a look. So we got almost two toolboxes worth of guano. So that's good fertilizer, 80% nitrogen, 50% phosphor. And of course, we can use it to make certain stone types. Then easily over 2000 glowstone dust. So that will last a while for everlasting torches. We should be good on this for a while. Don't need to make the blue steel lamps anymore. And then, of course, so much kaolinite. Almost 500 kaolinite now, and the same for amethyst. Right, time to actually use the uh, automatic quern, but it will actually run out of handstone durability. Didn't think you would get so much of that stuff. Quick check on the banana plants, no green top, but I'm gonna at least wait until October. 
Got a bit of time left in this episode for an automation project and I thought what actually needs to be done would be finally the automatic cheese making machine and also an automatic uh, sweet roll making machine. So I guess the goal would be that we press a button, it would make cheese. <laughs> so what needs to be done for this? Uh, so we need to pump exactly nine buckets of milk into a terra firma craft barrel and one bucket of vinegar and then seal the barrel and wait a certain amount of time and then take the cheese out and it needs to be put into a vessel so it doesn't spoil the quick. Um, we'll have to see yeah, how we can do this because how do we get exactly nine buckets out of a crate mod tank? I guess we could power a pump a certain amount of time. Maybe we can actually find just the right timing, tick accurate to do that. Or we actually need to take out nine buckets of milk somehow. With a, yeah, with a spout it would work. We just make nine buckets of milk, put it into a drain, and pump that into a barrel. Um, but I would definitely prefer if you can maybe find accurate timing for this. So getting this to work is definitely a matter of knowing how things work exactly and doing a lot of testing. And what better way to do this than just go to creative mode. So I made a big tanky already with milk inside and there's a pump below. So I set this extender here to seven ticks and with this configuration, we put in 128 milli buckets of milk into the barrel. If I just add one more tick, then it's twice. 256 milli buckets and we definitely know that number from somewhere of course it's dependent on the rotation speed so apparently the perfect speed for actually pumping stuff out would be 250 rpm because this way it'd be easy to get to like a full bucket so now we would put in a quarter bucket of milk in order to get a, a full bucket we would need to add six ticks let's get a new one and that's exactly one bucket of milk. Right, to get to nine buckets, I would need to add 64 more ticks. So that would be three seconds plus four ticks. If you set this to 18. And this one to three seconds. You should get exactly nine buckets of milk in the barrel. Uh, except we don't. Did I make a mistake? I guess it's gonna be 19 ticks. Let's see. <laughs> there we go, nine buckets. So in order to make cheese, we need to take those nine buckets of milk and add one bucket of vinegar. But we can't just yeah, right click the vinegar bucket on the milk barrel. Because I guess there's a conflict of liquids. So what I need to do is actually right click it, drag the bucket in there, then it turns into milk vinegar, then you gotta take the bucket out and seal it, and then it turns into curdling milk. I think this takes 8 hours. This is 8000 ticks. That's a question. Yes, so we got curdled milk, and if you just keep this uh, sealed, then it will turn into cheese after an additional 8 hours, or 8000 ticks I guess. So what we could actually do is automate making curdled milk, have a tank for that, and then in case we want to make cheese, then we just pump in 10 buckets of curdled milk in a barrel and seal this. I guess this is just faster because um, we only want to produce cheese on demand, and not like have a continuous process where always cheese is produced because it spoils after a while. Um, I guess it would be preferable. Okay, now the question is, can we pump in vinegar into the milk barrel. So it didn't work with the bucket. I actually don't expect this to work as well. The speed a bit higher. No. So in order to automate this, we actually need to put in yeah, the vinegar bucket directly into the barrel. I'm pretty sure we can do this with hoppers. So what needs to happen pretty much to make the curdled milk is we need to put in nine buckets of milk into the barrel. There we go. Then we need to trigger a dispenser, a dropper or something like this that puts a bucket on a depot and then the spout will fill it. And then we got a filter below that filters for a filled bucket of vinegar. So like this. And then we put it into the barrel of a hopper. Now we got the milk vinegar inside. Now we need to 
sealed. Uh, oh, I actually ejected the bucket when I did this. Oh, okay. Yeah, we will also need a funnel here on the side to actually take out the bucket in the first place and cycle it back to the dropper. Now that we need to seal it, we can seal barrels with redstone. And then it's just waiting time until we get the curdled milk. I hope the content observer can actually detect it. So I'm just gonna add a couple ticks there. Curdled milk. No signal. Oh, that's such a shame. I was really hoping that we can f uh, somewhat detect this. Oh, that's actually really disappointing. So we can observe if there's curdled milk inside only if the barrel is not sealed. Then a content observer can detect it. But if the barrel is sealed, then it seems like nothing can really interact with it. We can't even pump out stuff out of a sealed barrel to maybe check with the fluid pipe if you got curdled milk in there. Hmm. So the problem is with this, if I just do a yeah, certain clock that after a certain amount of ticks um, would take out the curdled milk, this can be actually affected by just sleeping. So a player sleeping the wrong moment could break this. That's really annoying. I think sleeping is actually a bigger problem. So what if there's only a couple of seconds left before we turn the milk vinegar into curdled milk and then we skip 12 hours, then we get cheese directly and I don't think we will ever have curdled milk inside. So we should really not uh, try to automate this. Okay, sleeping would break it. What if we just go for yeah, cheese directly? So there we basically got a sealed up barrel for 16 hours and at the end same question again, can we detect if there's cheese inside, if the barrel is locked? Okay, let's try, let's add a couple ticks. We got 32 cheese inside and we can't detect it again. Okay, that's such a bummer. Yeah, we also can't randomly open the barrel to, to <laughs> take a look inside because uh, that re actually resets the time it takes to convert the stuff. Um, so the only thing we can do is make a clock that after yeah, a certain amount of ticks that in the best case would correspond to this timer. Yeah, opens the barrel and then the cheese just goes outside. That could mean in some cases we actually waste some time so the cheese is already finished because somebody skipped some time by sleeping and then got the cheese inside for like five minutes more. Not the biggest issue, but I guess the best we can do. Ah, it's such a shame we can't detect what's inside when it's locked. Can an observer maybe detect if cheese finishes? There's a sound indicator, but it's not getting detected externally again. Ah, that's really unfortunate. So I know one yeah, partial fix or workaround for the sleeping issue. So we would need to tell how much time is advanced to somehow detect it. We could maybe use the clockwork bearing for this. That's something I haven't used before shown. So this is basically yeah, a bearing where the blocks in front act like an hour hand of an analog clock. So here I can also show the time of the day using the cuckoo clock and the display link, but I can't really get an info redstone signals or whatever, what time of the day is. So I basically want a better version of the daylight detector. Um, daylight detector is also not great at detecting the time of the day because it can actually be influenced by the weather. So that's why this thing was always flawed and uh, uh, hardly used in vanilla because of that as well. So we're missing really something in vanilla that can accurately tell the time of the day and not be influenced by the weather or something like that. Yeah, here, without looking at it any further, I just know that we have the clockwork bearing that potentially with some redstone contacts could do this. So I set it, I think, to a 24 hour mode right now. I could also do a 12 hour mode. It's easier to understand, I guess. Yeah, so at 1 a.m. This leans this way. In the yeah, front I attached a redstone contact. If two of those touch each other, they would give out a redstone signal. At least they should. <laughs> they actually move it like three hours further. So at 6 a.m. yeah we get a signal. So we now know it's 6 a.m. because this redstone dust line would be on. Not entirely sure if you can also somehow get a signal if this is not straight. Doesn't seem like it. 
I'm not entirely sure if this would be possible somehow. But at least certain hours of the day, we could accurately tell the time of the day uh, using the redstone here in the back. I'm not entirely sure if there's maybe any other mechanic, but also kind of don't want to get into this right now. It's just something uh, to keep in mind. In mind, maybe I want to use it later. I actually, have bigger plans now um, for this whole yeah approach to making cheese. So instead of having one barrel that basically yeah continuously makes batches of curdled milk, why not go larger? Um, make I don't know ten barrels of curdled milk at once in one big batch process. Maybe also use some redstone machinery to make it more visual. So we like. Take nine or ten barrels, fill it with milk, then move it over a couple blocks, then we add the vinegar, then we move it a couple blocks over again, seal it with a nice um, yeah, visual uh, process, and then yeah, it's turned all into the curdled milk, and we pump everything into a, a new fluid tank. I think this would also be a really cool project that we can do in the next episode. I think that would be actually the better approach. Okay, so in order to not just end in creative here, I'm gonna at least, because that should be fairly straightforward, add a yeah, mechanism to at least automate the sweet roll making process so I don't need to use the hand crank anymore. But I'm really excited about this, this big batch process of making curdled milk. And then we still want um, yeah, to make the, the cheese on demand. Press a button, take 10 buckets of curdled milk and, and make the cheese. Back in survival, I spent the last hour yeah, making some space here below the cow barn. So there's enough room for the big curdled milk making machine that I want to add the next episode. Um, I also redid the redstone for the cow barn door. Remove basically everything and replace it with two sequence gear shifts. So the instructions are fairly simple. It just says now, when activated, turn nine degrees, wait five seconds, turn 90 degrees back. So that's it. And here we just got a redstone line. Oh, actually need to add this. Hooked up to the yeah, no block basically. All right, so the cow barn door is working again. Quick check on the bananas. It's late August now. It's still not coming back. I'm gonna wait until October. All right, so wait five seconds and closes it. Another advantage of the sequence gear shift would be in case we change the RPM for some reason to open it faster or slower, then it would still work without yeah, the big headache of redoing the whole wiring. That's actually <laughs> so convenient. Okay, what I also did was I expanded the size of the fluid tank. Take a look down there. It's a bit larger now. Um, I decided to actually not add the sweet roll system this episode is actually not that hard. I mean, all we need is basically yeah, a chest, then a smart shoot below that puts exactly one bread on a belt or even more. Then we have a spout above, dispenses milk powered by a pump. And then we have a funnel collecting the sweet rolls in a chest. That's it. Uh, I decided to not do it right away because I actually want to build a big curdled milk system first. And then whatever space available it will be reserved for the sweet roll making system. Okay, then I think it was still good progress this episode. Got a lot done. We looked into it, how it works in creative. And yeah, we also brought on a lot of materials. Hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.